Eugene Fisher, the founder of Fisher Industries, lived by a simple yet noble philosophy. Do your job, do it right, and be proud of what you do. Exhibiting a tireless work ethic, Fisher was born and raised in Dickinson, North Dakota. He found a love for the aggregate industry at an early age, even skipping his high school picnic so he could screen gravel. It's no surprise then that in 1952 at 24, Fisher started Fisher Sand and Gravel Company. Ultimately, Fisher built his company into one of the largest producers of sand and gravel in the United States. Colleagues and employees admired Fisher, who died in 2013, for his leadership and willingness to teach. He continuously made time to explain how things worked, and he was one who worked alongside his employees. Fisher never asked someone to do a task he wasn't willing to do himself, and he embraced challenges, treating them as opportunities. Among Fisher's greatest achievements was the establishment of General Steel and Supply Company, the equipment support arm to Fisher's sand and gravel. Not only did General Steel and Supply serve as a place where Fisher could customize his own equipment, but it was somewhere producers like him could turn for answers to their own painful production problems. Perhaps the most groundbreaking solution Fisher provided was the Fisher Air Separator. Using his ingenuity and problem-solving skills, Fisher curtailed water shortages by patenting his own classification system. The signature piece of General Steel and Supply, the Fisher Air Separator, helps to remove fine particulates from manufactured sand using air instead of water. Fisher was highly dedicated to his work, regularly seeking reading materials, attending equipment auctions, and drawing up new crushing and screening configurations. But Fisher also had a softer side. He enjoyed traveling and, toward the end of his life, spending time with his grandchildren. A veteran who served in the Korean War, Fisher was proud to have served his country. He took great pride in his local community, as Fisher Industries serves as local sponsors to organizations like the Boy and Girl Scouts of America, Relay for Life, Walk to End Alzheimer's, and United Way. Today, Fisher Industries is in its second generation of ownership, under the direction of Fisher's son, Tommy. Growing up, Tommy had aspirations of being a rock star. Before passing the company down, Gene told his son, you're a star all right, but it's with rock crushing. Fisher Industries currently employs more than 1,000 people, serving as one of the greatest legacies for the ambitious quarry man from North Dakota. Boy, I got big shoes to fill. It could say that my father dedicated his whole life to the aggregate industry. When he was just a young boy, he shoveled sand and gravel by hand with my grandfather and made deliveries all over town. Some saw, thought that he was an innovator, and he built his first screen. I always asked him, what made you build your first screen? And he said, well, son, if you screen rock, you get two bucks a yard. If you sell gravel and you still got to load it by hand, you get two bits. Like two bits, two bucks. But when I went and looked it up, it was eight times the money. And when you do it by hand, you learn real quick the value of a good screen. <clears throat> Later, he'd go on in life and establish Fisher Sand and Gravel in 1952. He was a self-taught engineer. He finished, some people say, he told me, 10th grade, but he really got his high school degree, and he bought the school shortly after to prove that he had that high school degree, and he always said he was top of his class. <laughs> well, I come to find out, he was the only one of his class. <laughs> But as life went on, the entrepreneur that he was, he was a risk taker, and he bet things. But the one thing that you heard about Dad is no matter what risk he took, if you're willing to work hard when things don't go your way, you work your way out of it every time. And he built a reputation as an aggregate producer to several prime contractors across the uh, Midwest that Fisher was the choice for aggregate production, whether it was the interstate highway system in 1962 or anything there. But then dad met his other true love in his life, my mom, Sheila. 
And at that point, they probably took the biggest career change ever when they built General Steel and Supply because Dad understood to be a great custom crusher, you have to be vertically integrated. And once they were vertically integrated and they built the highest quality conveyors, the chassis, their own electrical, no different than he was one of the first pioneers to power the whole crushing spread electric, electrically with um, portable generators, it set a new level for multiple companies to follow. But they built General Steel. And with that, I always asked him as a young kid, you know, why did you do it? And he always looked at me because he said, God keeps the playing field a little unlevel. And I said, well, why is that? He said, no matter where you go in the world, the aggregates are different. This quarry is this way. The sand and gravel pits this way. Sometimes you need to remove clay. Sometimes you have too much rock. Sometimes too much sand. You need the right equipment to fit. And when I change my mind, I need that company to build me exactly what I need. Because as a sub, we have to perform. So as they moved farther in their life, and Dad saw a lot of other different um, options for um, manufacturing business, he invented several patents. Of course, he saw the air separator, which was finally after, and Dad was one of these kind of guys that would draw a lot of things on napkins. So I believe some of the people that work with us, Flo and Greg over there with almost 80 years combined between the two, it took a long time because Dad wanted it perfect. And before that air separator would be sold, not only did it have to work, it had to be superior to any air classifier out there, and it had to be portable. And finally, in 1995, it met Dad's approval, and we started selling air separators. Today, air separators are in 14 different countries around the world of the hundreds that are made. But also, those same air separators made Fisher Sand and Gravel one of the premier custom crushing companies anywhere in the U.S. when I took over. So what is an air separator? The biggest difference is, is if you don't have a lot of water in the southwest, you have to classify dry. And um, it's really helped. But if you're making hot mix, any of you guys in here that have hot mix, if you wash and your aggregates are wet, it takes more burner fuel or different heating in environment to uh, get your eggs ready for hot mix. So the air separators have paid a, a valuable um, uh, deal for other companies and then sometimes in limestone pits and different things even the minus 200 is a product that they can sell on both sides so anyway dad's moral character always showed with any of the community leaders and he was always respected among all business but he was always asked too for someone so successful how did you do it with a 10th grade education you know barely a high school education Dad said, well, I spoke one time, Tommy, at a college for young entrepreneurs. And I got up there and said, you know, business is fairly simple. If you're not too greedy and you're okay making 1%, you know, that's fine. And all of a sudden he got laughed at by these kids, these entrepreneurs. 1%, Mr. Fisher. I mean, that won't even cover overhead. And he said, well, in my education, if something costs $1, I sell it for $2. And I make my 1%, and I can easily cover overhead. <laughs> so today, Dad took a chance on me and gave me the keys to the kingdom at the age of 25. And 26 years later, through his hard work, Fisher Industries is a half a billion dollar company a year. But it's not only Dad's work, it's the family's work of everyone that works in our company that he's inspired. And I remember it's been five years since he's passed away towards the end of life we talked. And he goes, you know, that was sort of a big accomplishment, how we grew and stuff, because I was always easy on people. I worked hard, but I only demanded all our people in our company to work half days. And we grew this big. And I said, yeah. And I said, which 12 hours did they choose? <laughs> and that was Dad's philosophy. You weren't on overtime until you were after 12. And he said the good thing about working half days, if you start at 6, you end at 6. If your watch is works twice a day, you know when you get there and you know when you go home. <laughs> so with that, a few more things he taught, and he taught the rest of our people at Fisher. He taught us the respect for gravity, the respect to how have something is level, and the respect for balance. I challenged him every way. Dad, what's the big deal with gravity? I mean, we have equipment. It's got hydraulics, you can go or whatever. So he taught me like anyone else. He put a five-gallon bucket of rock in my hand, and he said, go to walk down that hill and take it over by the crusher. 
So I walked down. Okay, no big deal. He said, now you're going to learn about gravity. I want you to take that bucket and walk back up there and put it back where you found it. It only took one time to understand that. Then when it came to level, everything needs to be level. There was no better skinner or dozer hand in this room than my dad. When we'd set up a portable crushing plant, he could take a D9, a D10, or a D8, take two passes. That was one thing I could never do, and it was level. He would get fought with everyone. There is no way that's level. As the equipment would go and we'd take the level checks out, by God, it was level. <laughs> then, one more time on balance, he asked, you know, when you feed a crusher, you got transfer points. You need to make the transfer points as low as possible and feed the crusher square. I said, well, what's the big deal about that? So I learned another valuable lesson. He told me to put a stick above my head, and then he got on top, and he pushed down when I was holding it straight up. He goes, that's how you feed a crusher dead square. Now you're going to learn the other trick. Put it back up, and he put all the weight there, and I tipped over in a second. How would you like to be the cone crusher being fed on the side? No different than transfer points, anyone that's in this aggregate business. Why do you need a drop point? What's the big deal if it's two feet going under the next belt? Well, after I changed the impact idlers a couple times, I learned two feet's a long way. <laughs> so in the end, oh, and one more thing about balance and level. I never knew balance and level until I saw how many screens Dad could put on his Lincoln and take out to the job when we had to completely change a screen deck. So any of you guys with screens, you understand what I'm doing. So, and Dad wasn't scared to get in there and change the screens. But in the end, what softened him up was definitely his grandkids. Dad loved to teach, and he taught along. He taught me how to drive when I was 12, sitting on phone books. No different than he taught my oldest son how to do the same or operate any equipment. Except when he decided to teach my son, they took off for a half day, and we couldn't find them. Twelve hours later, they show up after the pits and stuff. He always made Grant take, you know, take the heat on that. But... In the end, Dad loved work, and it got in your blood. I always did want to be a rock star, but I so much enjoy being a rock crusher, and I'm so proud. And there's not a day that goes by that myself, my family, my wife, daughters, mom, everyone's life of the 1,500 employees would never be the same without the hard work of Dad, how he started it all. Dad died with absolutely no regrets, with his whole entire family there by his side, in the end, and I remember the last day, he said, Tommy, in life you can't take anything with you, but you can leave your talents behind. And I'm so fortunate that you've taken a hold of the company, your sons, your daughter, other grandkids, the next generation, hopefully it gets in their blood too, to live on the legacy you know, that I've created and, and had with the help of our family. So having the privilege of calling this well-respected man my dad and growing up and observing his leadership, integrity, business, acumen, um, prudence, and solid moral, contract, uh, moral co uh, character, I believe that he has more than earned his honor in being inducted into the Pitt and Quarry Hall of Fame. It is with my sincere, heartfelt appreciation to the members of the board for giving him that opportunity and the um, recognition which has given him a permanent place in history along, along all the other peers in this room. I know today Dad's looking down. I'm sure proud of all of us and all of you, even in your toughest days when, you know, the crusher's not running or something, hang in there and keep going because there's always a better day, he used to say. So on behalf of all the members of the Fisher family, all our employees, it's a sincere thank you for making this moment happen. Thank you very much.